As is the custom with our winter commencement ceremony, we have invited one of Marshall University's leading faculty members to be our guest speaker. Josh Brunty is an associate professor of digital forensics at Marshall's College of Science, where he teaches both foundational and specialized digital forensics courses. He has more than a decade of experience in high-tech criminal investigation, and he has assisted in many high-profile cases, both in and around West Virginia. Since coming to Marshall, Professor Brunty has been recognized as a recipient of the Marshall and Shirley Reynolds Outstanding Teacher Award. He has authored numerous publications in the fields of digital forensics, mobile device forensics, and social media investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Josh Bronte to the podium. Wow. <laughs> thank you, President Smith, and thank you all very much. And good morning, Marshall graduates, faculty, administration, friends, relatives, parents, grandparents, and especially you mammals. Yes, mammals. <laughs> it's Southern West Virginia. I know there's about five or 600 mammals here today. <laughs> when the administration asked me to speak to you all for graduation, I wanted to prepare for it much like you all would as students for a major term paper or assignment. So at 10.30 p.m. last night, I <laughs> logged into Blackboard and saw my assignment there and decided I got a little more time. So I went over to the Fifth Avenue Sheets, the Fifth Avenue Sheets, got me a couple of Red Bulls, walked down to Fourth Avenue, got me a sandwich from Rocco's Little Italy. Don't say you haven't done it before. Then walked back to my dorm room where the desk monitor kicked me out telling me, Professor Brunny, you don't have a dorm room here anymore. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> got back to my dorm room and played a little Call of Duty 2 online. Three and a half hours of Fortnite, Pin some cute little kitchen ideas on Pinterest. Then watch him share some funny little dog videos on TikTok. Once I was confident I was ready to begin this speech, I sat down again, logged back into Blackboard, and then realized the assignment was overdue. After going back to TikTok and watching even more dog videos, I sat down and crafted an email to President and Provost explaining my mysterious illness, car problems, <laughs> and the terrible traffic that I was stuck in on I-64 that prevented me from writing this speech. They still haven't answered me, Brad. <laughs> so don't expect a lot out of this today because it's really a zero speech. There's some mammal up there that's like, man, I wish that professor would shut up. I just want to see my grandbaby graduate and go get something to eat here shortly. All jokes aside, if any of you all know me, you know I'm a person of stories, and I find it fitting to take the time today to tell you one. Like many of you all here today, I earned my bachelor's and master's degrees here at Marshall, and like many of you, I grew up right here in southern West Virginia, in a little town due south of here called Salt Rock. And I'm sure we have some Salt Rockers here today, as a matter of fact. If you know anything about Salt Rock, it's a little blue-collar town full of the hardest-working people you ever meet in this world. In the center of that little town is really its gym, its Camelot, Salt Rock School, which I had the privilege of attending and being taught by some of the greatest teachers I believe you'll ever run across here in the United States. When I got to fourth grade at that little school, I was assigned to the classroom of Mrs. Lucy Ann Call. If I had to describe Mrs. Lucy Ann Call to you, I would simply say that, well, she was a rabid Marshall fan. She wore green every day, and her classroom was filled full of little Marshall trinkets. She commonly talked about her experiences at Marshall as a student back in the 1970s, how she got a great education there, her days as a cheerleader for the Thundering Herd, and how she met the love of her life while she was here, Marshall football. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> oh, it's Rick. No, it's Marshall football. Let's be real. She painted Marshall University to us little country kids as if it were Camelot. I remember one day they packed all of us kids onto a school bus and brought us all the way down to Huntington. And I don't remember what they brought us down here for, but I do remember after we finished up, she instructed the bus driver to make a loop around Marshall's campus. 
And as we drove around the perimeter of campus, she pointed every notable building she could see to us. That's the science building, and that's where they train future doctors and scientists, she said. And that's Smith and Corbley Halls. That's where some of the greatest minds you've ever met have been educated, she said once again. One by one, she pointed out each building and its significance to us. And I remember that night when I got home, I went back to my little bedroom in a small trailer that we lived in at the time, a little bedroom that I shared with a washing machine, I'll add. I lay there before I fell asleep, and I remember thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be one of those people she was talking about today. She instilled in me and my other classmates confidence that if you work hard, you'll achieve whatever you're after. It was in her class that I got my first ever A grade. True story. Time passed on, and I found myself moving on from Salt Rock and ready to choose colleges. I visited the campuses of West Virginia, Kentucky, the University of Tennessee, the list goes on. And they were all beautiful, wonderful campuses in their own right, but it wasn't my Camelot. It wasn't my first love. It wasn't Marshall. Fast forward to, first, to my first year on campus. It was November 14th, a Wednesday. It's one of those days you never forget as long as you live. And you students know if you've been on campus the week of November 14th, it's a pretty somber time. I attended my first fountain ceremony and then afterward headed into the student center where they had little easels set up along the, with the biographies of each of the 75. The first one I ran across was Marshall's athletic director in 1970, a man by the name of Charlie Couts. As I read his biography, he was doing pretty great things for the university, and there was no doubt in my mind from what I was reading, he was turning Marshall into an absolute powerhouse of a school into the 1970s. As I scanned through his biography, it stated, he left behind a wife named Lucy and his three daughters, one of them named Lucy Ann. Hey, I know Lucy Ann. Well, that's ironic. That was my favorite teacher at Salt Rock. Continuing to read on, it said, who was at the time of the crash, a Marshall University cheerleader and a current teacher. I was shocked. I was stunned. I remember going back to my room that night and feeling so much sadness, pain, and grief for my favorite Salt Rock teacher. How did I not know this? Why didn't she ever tell us that? Well, if you don't know Mrs. Lucy Ann Couch's call, you should know that she's all positive all the time. She knew that us kids weren't ready to process that, and so she did as she did for countless other little country kids. She poured happiness and knowledge, and man, she did a dang good job of it. I think me standing up here today is just a small testament of how good of a job she did with us. <laughs> Marshall roots run deep, folks. I'm happy to say that she was able to make her way from her well-deserved retirement beach house down south to join us today, and I just want to simply recognize her and thank you for changing this little country kid's life and countless others. Where's she at? I want her to stand up. Gosh, I love that lady so much. Today you all will be handed a degree intertwining you forever as a part of the Marshall family. And like Mrs. Lucy Ann Couts call myself here, I can promise you that your life and career will have many, 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 many bright yellow sunny days. But in the mix of those sunny days will be dark blue, gloomy days that will bring you sadness, test your patience, and outright break your heart. But if I can take wisdom from a Ziploc bag, you just know that yellow and blue make green. But not just any type of green, that loud, bright Kelly green that mixed with the block Marshall M will probably get you a notice and a we are or a go herd, whether you be in L.A., D.C., or even South Bend, Indiana. <laughs> get used to it. It's who we are. It's obvious that the world hasn't been kind to you in your education these past couple of years. But I'm confident that each and every one of you will be stronger for it. And man, you're going to do great things in your life. And I'm sure that adversity and outright heartache will be thrown your way in the future. 
But just like this daughter of Marshall here, Mrs. Lucianne Kautzkall, who experienced the worst tragedy during her college years that you could possibly imagine, keep on pouring positivity in people because you never know what happens. <laughs> because you never know. That little country kid or that person you mentor right now might just be the graduation speaker speaking about you one of these days. Thank you all so much, and go herd. Wow, Josh, that was far from a zero. Those Red Bulls and TikTok really worked. I don't know if anyone can see from where you're sitting, but not only does he bleed green, he wears green. Can you just put your foot up in the air there for a minute? And Miss Lucy Ann Kautz call is everything he described and more. When I had the privilege to come home and serve my alma mater one year ago, my very first day in the office was a bag with a handwritten note that simply said, welcome home. Thank you, Lucy Ann. You're beautiful. <clears throat> Josh, tears are contagious, buddy. <laughs> 